Oh, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Um, my heart is really excited. First, because God is still God. Now, that's not a little statement. God is still God. And so we are glad that we will never see shame. Second, because he will never gather a people to himself until there is a feast. He said, go and compel the people to come. The feast was already prepared. Hallelujah. And third, because I truly believe from the depth of my heart that every one of us, by the grace of God, will walk out of this place rejoicing, celebrating. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I especially want to thank, you know, God, ba. let me tell you this. When you walk with God, he will continually make your life a sign and a wonder. I want to truly celebrate and appreciate all who have taken the pain, the sacrifice, the resources to travel from within and outside this country. So many people have been here from within the week. There are people who came in. Um, from the morning till evening they've been on their way risking themselves on the road um, why would god allow you go through this rigor and then just leave you with a good feeling no you are in for an experience that will be worth any sacrifice that you paid to be here you've heard me say it but let me tell you this sincerely if you ever find your way to this ground it's already a, a sign that is a miracle has started in your life and now you will think i'm just bragging and boasting until the lord opens your eyes to see the resistance that fights you from where you are to this place that you truly survived and arrived there it's already for you it's a token already that that laughter is already on the way praise the lord um, I especially want to bless God for our precious Lagos family. Let's honor them. Precious, precious. It's a real family, I tell you. Thank you so Want much. House on the Rock, HICC. And the Lord bless and honor you in the name of Jesus. Now, please listen. I was just meditating um, this afternoon. You know, it is very difficult to be me. Let me explain to you what I mean. When you understand that by the privilege of God's grace, the miracle, the deliverance, the healing of someone is resting on your knowing God, on your accessing his power, is a very difficult responsibility praise the Lord because the guilt that will latch on to you if the people live without being blessed and changed they came because they believed God and then they believed you it's up to you to prove that the God who sent you is still alive you see how difficult it is but then as I meditate on the wonderful things that God continues to do by his grace in and through my life and this ministry you know we get 
literally without exaggeration so many the testimonies that are shared here is is not is not up to one tenth of the wonders that god continues to do in the lives of people the transformation the healing the restoration favor encounters and so on and so forth and um you know when people say joshua selman did it or the god of joshua selman all of these things by my persona i'm not somebody who um i'm not a spotlight person at all at all if i have my way i would gladly hide behind and you know just let god do his thing um but sometimes the kind and the nature of responsibility that god gives you would always require that you make contact with people and i'm really grateful to god i can tell you this i am as blessed by the testimonies as though it didn't happen by god and through me when i listen to these testimonies my my phone is always full of testimonies situations that you cannot imagine and then as we continue to grow by his grace in the anointing it's amazing to see what new dimensions begin to come in and are introduced into our lives and our experience because there is increase and growth in the anointing um, i'm taking out time to say this i'm just sharing my heart with the lord when i came out from the car i saw our precious people standing outside everywhere knowing the probably hundreds of thousands millions of people from around the world following and everybody is silent now and all of them are looking at one man Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm sad. Just to see you glorify. Please take the stage, Lord, and have your way as they behold you. I'm just a vessel, there's nothing more. When you're done. I'm truly satisfied just to see you glorified. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. after you would have healed oh god delivered torn someone's decade old challenge overnight i'm satisfied just to see you glorified lord every time people say me let it be that they mean you every time they say it is joshua selman let it be that they truly meant to say you jesus the son of the living god when you're done please take the glory i'm satisfied 
just to see you glorified. My desire has never been to be a preacher. My desire has never been to be a celebrity. No. All of these things mean absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. All that I desire with my life is that God can find a space through this vessel and bring glory to the name of his son. And I'm telling you, if that happens, I am completely satisfied. This mundane pursuit of so many things is not it at all. I sang this song from the depth of my heart. It's not just something you pretend because you're on stage. It's, it's been my passion to see that the mighty things that God would do even tonight, that it would not just be the promoting of the name of a man, as inevitable as that may look, but that behind all of this, my desire is to see Jesus, to see him glorified, and his name be lifted. That for me, it's an honor already to be the vessel to be used by God. And let me teach you something. Please listen. If you're a man of God here, please listen. This is a miracle service. Conquer the addictiveness of fame and power. Conquer it. It's a beautiful experience to be on the other side of the applause, on the other side of the commendations. It's a wonderful thing. But if you do not conquer the deception that comes with that lust to be known, to be famous, you will never go far with God. Pray as far as you can pray. Fast as far as you can fast. Read the Bible for as long as you can read. But if that heart condition, that circumcision does not happen, you will never go far with God. I believe with all my heart that this is a word already for someone. You know, most times when people see God um, doing mighty things through men, the celebration that comes with results begins to whet the appetite of their lusts and they think, oh dear, let me have this opportunity and shine too and prophesy too and pray. No. This song must become a, an anthem and a desire in your life. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he says, I will draw all men to myself it is cheaper stepping back and allowing him to take his place hallelujah I will just share a few things very briefly and then we'll pray we have a lot to do but the Lord just inspired in my heart to challenge us and it's important for us to understand that God I will continue to teach us this the boundary of God's power is his word God is limited by the provisions that his word allows he cannot go outside of the scope of his word in blessing in lifting in delivering whatever it is that he does has to be consistent with the allowance provided for by his word hallelujah and so it, it matters I know that many of us are here we are trusting god to just step in don't worry just 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 calm down and lend your attention let the holy spirit minister very deeply and challenge you because when the word of god listen carefully please when the word of god is not released there is no basis for the power of god to flow are we together now the bible says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of God hides behind his light. And so when the effulgence of that light comes, then his power is ready 
to be released. The first thing I want to share tonight is, is a word of caution again to just remind us again number one that every believer's pursuit and goal is to be like Christ and to reflect him to the world please listen our goal is beyond miracles our goal our pursuit is beyond signs wonders our pursuit is beyond the knowledge of mysteries and principles as powerful as they are it is important for us to understand fundamentally that our pursuit sincerely in this kingdom is number one to become like Christ experientially apostle was speaking and he said my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you so the formation of Christ in a believer and then the ability to reflect Christ to the world this should be our highest pursuit so miracles signs wonders methodologies and principles deliverance healings all of these things are subsets and must remain so they are only possibilities that are brought into our lives to the end that we find the comfort and the stability to pursue this one goal to be like Christ and to reflect Christ to the world if we veer off from this ultimate goal then miracles will no longer be a blessing listen carefully prosperity will no longer be a blessing breakthrough of any sort will no longer be a blessing the value the value in receiving the miraculous in prospering receiving restoration breakthrough etc the value is in its ability to contribute to keep you at ease so that you can continue this pursuit of becoming like Christ in experience are we together it is very important because it is easy for believers to veer off now because we are humans please you have to listen to this many of us seated here right now and many following from around the world online we were buffeted by all kinds of situations and truly let me tell you um, the human was not designed to find ease in pain so that that focus to get pain away to get everything that looks like tragedy it can overwhelm your desire to pursue Christ you just want the money because you are tired of the embarrassment from landlord you want to know the principles you're tired of being laughed at and so on and so forth you want the miracle you are tired of the pain you are tired of living on drugs you know you want the job you are tired of being limited you want the child you know all of these things they are very legitimate desires but i am saying the real value of the manifestation of the power of god is the revelation of jesus christ through it you have to understand this so all that we do here all that we teach all that we do is an attempt to coordinate our lives and our destinies together by the spirit to the end that when all is said and done more than the knowledge of principles more than the knowledge of formulas and methodologies more than physical results of breakthrough prosperity increase speed and all of these possibilities in the kingdom more than all of this our greatest pride in fact even more than purpose an assignment as it were that we become like Christ in experience and then out of the abundance the richness of him that has been formed in us we can reflect that to the world whoever does that is a winner a real winner hallelujah ministries that work 
in very strong dimensions of the anointing the prophetic healing signs and wonders usually will need to remind themselves every once and again because the charismatism around the move of god and the manifestation of god's power alone can tilt you away from this understanding are we together in a few minutes now god is going to be touching lifting blessing people and all kinds of testimonies will be coming and sometimes we have believers who tabernacle within organizations and spiritual platforms like this for many years they never know god they never have a personal encounter with god their lives do not become reflections of his possibilities with time although they get miracles although they receive impartations although the gifts of the spirit continue to work in their lives are we together although they will buy cars and houses and build estates although the ministries will move from permanent site to permanent site and increase and expand and become successful in as much as we know success to be but if all of these things happen and they do not point us back to the lord and help us to know him not to know what he can do to know who he is then there is a serious problem is god blessing us today there are people who will never opt to be born again they are uninterested in anything that has to do with salvation they are not interested in god but they are interested in every other thing aside from salvation they want the healing power that comes with the kingdom they want the fame the increase the speed they want the revelation everything that can come they desire but that encounter with the son of the living god is something that um even ministers are uninterested really they just want the charismatism and the reason is there is an explanation because we are humans we work with our senses and the things that we see and experience is what we can relate with are we together and whoever is the face behind that will have all kinds of benefits financial benefits benefits of fame and influence and loyalty etc so it is it is more rewarding physically to ignore the pursuit of the knowledge of christ and pursue the manifestation of power and miracles if someone throws his crutches with blind eyes is open if a deaf ear opens i mean that news will spread far if you say someone was saved they say well glory to god as usual but what really happened what people mean i mean what is the wow factor in the meeting we must be spiritual enough to value the power of becoming like christ we must be spiritual enough to see the all surpassing superiority that that pursuit provides above and beyond getting things it is god's desire that our lives become a reflection of christ knowing god and having a personal work with god is our highest priority write it down please knowing god and having a personal work with god is the believer's highest pursuit our highest priority is not to end the family crisis please listen if you are not listening to me it's a sign that the devil is distracting you because what i'm saying is very important you will receive the miracles you will receive the signs the wonders the miracles the breakthrough this is for sure but knowing god and having a personal walk with god is our highest priority our highest priority so while i receive the miracle the job the breakthrough the blind eyes opening the deaf ears opening speed coming into my life restoration happening decades of barrenness vanishing overnight infirmities and diseases living just like that more than those things please listen to me the real value is that 
they now take away the hindrances that can distract my pursuit of knowing God. Are we together? Why do we hate poverty? Not because poverty, um, we hate the role it plays in limiting your knowing God and becoming like him. Why? Because it takes time to know God. It takes time to understand his ways. And that same time it takes to know God is what the world demands of you to be able to give you financial stipends. So there is a conflict. You have your time. It can be used to know God or it can be used to pursue wealth all through your lifetime. This is why we hate poverty. And then because every time you are serving the Lord, Caesar will come. I've taught you this. And demand tribute. When you focus to worship God, Caesar will come. And if the way to be a peacemaker in the earth is a formula, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God. While you worship God, keep Caesar's coin because he's coming. When he comes, give him his coin and Caesar will go and you keep worshiping God. But the moment you cannot give Caesar's tribute, you will have to forego your worshiping God to labor to find his coin and give to him. Caesar distracted Jesus and distracted his service. Jesus said, okay, Peter, you have to go fishing. You were supposed to be listening to me. But now that Caesar has come, because it's a law, we have to break this transmission of worship. And sometimes it's not ours, it's your lifetime. Are you getting it now? So by the time I prophesy financial favor or I teach you on the principles of finance, it's not just for money's sake. It is to be able to keep Caesar's gold. And when Caesar knocks the door, you say, carry it, please. I'm focusing on God and destiny. Your tribute is there for you. The disturbance of Caesar is a terrible strategy to take you away from God. Caesar will come as your child's school fees. It will come as all kinds of wicked bills growing geometrically. So to be a peacemaker is to sustain the intelligence and the ability to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and then give to God what belongs to God. Why do we expose people to the power of God to lift? What is there about lifting? Because you cannot make impact when you are in the pit. When Joseph was in the well, he remained there. We don't know what he was doing down there. But one thing we know is that he was not making any impact. He was alone when he was brought out and honored in the palace. When he was there, he was able to salvage his brothers. Why do we have to prophesy speed? Are we together? The reason is because... Out the unit of destiny is time. Please listen very carefully. Whatever eats your time has eaten a portion of your life. Many of us got born again late already. You dedicated a major chunk of your life to ignorance and to the service of the devil. And now that you are born again, there is still the law of process. And if you are to follow the law of process in its normal course, you will never have the time to know God and serve. So God will have to introduce, I call them systems of advantage. He will bring them into the equation of your destiny to restore time. So that in one year, God can put 10 years inside one year. And then now he can allow you to make progress. Are we together? A woman who has been barren for 10 years. Already she, she would have had maybe three children at least. Well spaced and happy. Even if she has one child, she's making progress. But restoration has not yet happened to her. But when God gives that woman triplets, he didn't give her children. He took time and brought it back. Nine months. And an experience that was to span nine years. He brought it in nine months. Are we together? So I want you to see every miracle and everything that happens to you with respect to its contribution or its 
inhibition to your knowing God and pursuing him. If you remain poor, like many people have chosen to, the challenge there is that they will not know God and they will stop others from knowing God. If you remain weak and you are not strong, the challenge is one day your body will not be able to host the spirit again and it will leave. Because there is a requisite health condition for the spirit to be able to stay in this body. Your body is your passport to function in this realm. Not your passport to be alive. You don't need the body to be alive. But you need the body to be authorized to function in this dimension of God's kingdom. This is the reason why we agree with people that demonic sicknesses like cancer, like HIV, and all these sicknesses that don't have names, but have symptoms and the pain that they bring. When we agree for people to be touched, it's not just showing that a man of God is anointed. It's a way of saying God is interested in your longevity. God is interested in you serving him. Because those things are death sentences. Hallelujah. Are we together? So I want you to see everything that you will receive tonight with respect to its contribution. When you see someone getting healed or getting delivered, don't look at the rowdiness of the process. Rejoice with that person because something is happening to that person that will grant him or her the ease to serve God now. Are we together now? Our messages must be central and eventually. Remember the formula in, in the days of Moses. There were serpents, but there was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And that the condition was that if you set your gaze on that one, you will survive this one. In any case, you must look at the serpent. You can choose to look at the one that is on the ground there or look at the one lifted. Are we together now? And that anyone who stayed there ignoring all of these things and stayed there that person was saved healing is pointless if it does not lead to christ deliverance is pointless if it does not lead to christ prosperity a job increase all kinds of miracles they are pointless if they do not lead to christ so it's important for every one of us to get this Number two, the second thing I would say tonight is the fallacy. Listen carefully. We must conquer the fallacy of trying to do what we have not become. The futility of attempting to live out a lifestyle that has not been captured in our paradigm and our mindsets. Listen very carefully. It is futile to attempt to do things. Any lifestyle that your mindset cannot host is not yours. This is very powerful. Listen to my teaching, the mystery of deliverance. I call it deliverance through transformation. Many believers, listen to me very carefully. Now, there are people who do not believe that the idea and the concept of deliverance even exists. It does. It truly does. The only balance is that casting out a spirit or an influence, as I always teach, is not the end of it. Now, please, we need Africa, we need to hear this because um, we... Many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of God says. I can cast out a spirit out of a man. The influences can leave you. Spirits not only stay in men. A spirit can stay in a business. A spirit can stay in your... It doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man. Mm -mm. Man is their most preferred habitation, but not the only habitation. Spirits can stay in a business. They can stay anywhere. Anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits. They can stay in a challenge. 
a challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there are we together now now but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom the other part is that you must be transformed please say transformed when jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 and then luke chapter 4 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings listen carefully to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted are we together and then he said to set the captives free he had sent me to proclaim one of the versions who say proclaim deliverance there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted it is through the accurate dispensing of the word of god that means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension then your lifestyle follows suit are we together now it is futile to try to do things any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking believers a major part of our growth is in the realm of the mind you have to know this it's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind to meticulously mentor believers into understanding usually they think it is weakness a major part of the ministry of jesus was dedicated in mentorship in fact he did not finish the curriculum when he resurrected he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave their growth happened principally through his the mentorship of the word he started in matthew chapter 5 the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom this is how we function in this kingdom when they embraced it then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit that means the ministry of the holy spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation there is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation but the richer part of the ministry of the holy spirit is seen when we are transformed not before we are transformed the primary role of the holy spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign that's his primary assignment and then to convict and so on and so forth the richness of his ministry the potentials of a man's receiving the holy spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed that means if we are not transformed we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the holy spirit as can be seen in us most people think when the holy spirit comes he just continues to transform you and then that's no 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 transformation has an end are we together now that means you should be able to attain onto a level of commendable maturity where the holy spirit says now we can do business together you have risen to a realm where i can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly transformation is powerful many believers will not contend for transformation and there is a consequence if you do not contend for transformation the 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 consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism casting out devils temporary liberty casting out devils temporary liberty casting out devils temporary liberty remember that the spirits don't need to only come see listen let me tell you come um dr mecca look at this this gentleman can i can speak over his life prophetically watch this and within the space of two three days even one day this man can receive a million naira two million naira now he has not prospered that blessing is to help him 
to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held the money is not in his mind so he, he is not his own it was a loan that was given to him prophetically it becomes his when the money is in his mind so he can hold on to that and say ah apostle is powerful and after two months the the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle are we together now because he does not know the ways of god allocated for the increase and the sustenance of resources inevitably no matter how careful he uses that he uses that money it must finish and must leave him it's not an attack it's the law i've taught you because his growth does not allow this kind of result prophecy routed a way of bringing it to help him fast but because transformation was not there it must leave him now when it leaves him he will come back again and say apostle i brought ten thousand like that day and i will still speak i'll say now in the name of jesus may god bless you this time around it doesn't matter how much comes it's still the same thing whether it's hundred thousand or ten million he's still in trouble he's not free are we together now so it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business this man's life and so on and so forth i'm just using this as an example now after i take authority over that spirit the bible says when a spirit leaves a man it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place a place of habitation not finding any the spirit will advise itself i will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house he's still calling the man that means you remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free it finds the house swept clean but empty and then the bible says it gathers seven others jesus is teaching here now that means this is how the realm of the spirit works and returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former and because of his ignorance he will say the man of god is fake the man of god is not fake you are not transformed to sustain the miracle are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from at least you were in a you 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 had a house after the breakthrough now you don't even have a house again and you say ah i don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works in this church or in this ministry or somewhere no 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 not at all not at all but now imagine with me that god steps in over dr emeka's life are we together and then the lord blesses him still using the finance that that, that i'm giving an illustration around and this guy now god blesses him and he decides to say now that at least one million has come my destiny is bigger than one million but one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent are we together and just sort out my children now i can even if i can't pay everything i can pay first step i can rest while he's doing that he now subjects himself and said you know what i want to find out god's ways the ways are located for the prosperity of the saints and he begins to gather these teachings while he's listening do you know what he's doing he's closing the door this guy is prospering not when he's doing business when he is fortifying his mindset so that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again to preach deliverance to the captives many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house now i'm, I'm not being sarcastic i would not do that from church to church from apostle to apostle prophet to prophet pastor to pastor in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring are we together now yes we will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong notice no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy he loses it through ignorance prophecy brings it ignorance when the devil marks that you have this stronghold he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming this is how satan mocks many men of god across africa before they pray the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back 
he studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold the door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open and the spirit says i can stroll around the service will soon finish and i will route through just one door of ignorance and i'm back to the life back to the business are we together very very powerful so this gentleman as he's transformed something is happening to him you will find out prophecy now you will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance as you would call it it will show in his transformation so he can return and say 10 years ago watch this once upon a time i was poor or i was weak or i was under all kinds of yokes and all of that then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of god comma and then i subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of god and the holy ghost the more i expanded my spiritual capacity the more his potential the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me now look at my life i'm a testimony from here to here i never want this place to just become a place of miracles there's a service so let's go you'll be healed you'll be blessed i agree but i i disagree that you'll be sustainably blessed sustainably healed sustainably lifted except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight you must contend for knowledge this kingdom is knowledge based and not any kind of knowledge you are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear no there is a body of truth already allocated you are not given the luxury of inventing what you want it may not be comfortable to your your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you listen you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of god not the one that looks pleasant to you doctrinally speaking if you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory to walk in the fullness of the victorious life then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one now you already know that this guy is in trouble there is a reason why he's taught that as uncomfortable as this you have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say I, I may not like it it doesn't i mean who would want to touch a cadaver who would want to walk with a dead body who would want to keep giving people injections all around i mean these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things who would want to do that but you have to do it that's the only way the uh, what the, what's inside that the um drug will get into your body there's no bluetooth for it it has to go directly <laughs> are we together so this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection you have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort and you endure the thing and receive it for a few days and after that you are fine this is it it's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe that means that um by let me explain what i mean the believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results isn't it funny that believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say no 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 um i don't like this i like this i don't like this it's pride the bible says when you are ready to receive there is a quality that is required it's called meekness that you receive with meekness the engrafted word you must embrace the whole counsel of god to experience all of god are we learning what i'm sharing with you is very powerful this is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have you know africa we like prayer and prayer is good but visionless prayer that is not seen 
as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy flattery in religion and will never produce results the value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept prayer does not just work generically regardless of your obeying other principles is why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer god must be answering spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of god if you choose a dimension and leave the rest so we have people who are always praying always delivering something always casting out demons now please i i, I don't say it with with a with a heart of sarcasm at all don't don't find offense in any way this way you will never become a portrait of the victory of christ it will never truly happen it was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever what then is the excellency of the finished work of christ then on the other hand we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free oh boy and their lives continue to show that this is not correct when they are sick they don't say christ paid for my sickness they go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right the possibility of sickness the possibility of defeat no matter how temporal is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint but it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest and people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave are we together I shall not die you are deteriorating no no god forbid i know that i'm fine you are going down you are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares you finish praying immediately and lie down the spirit say he's asleep now let's continue and you get up and say i didn't see anything you are joking there until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again there is something called the death of a fool it is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance. We must embrace the whole counsel of Christ. If you did not prosper by default, then you will not stay healthy by default. You will not stay delivered by default. It has to be engaged through growth. They are stabilizers. They provide the dimensions of your stability. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You must know the truth and know it enough to set you free are we blessed I wrote something down here our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways the principles the methodologies of the kingdom praise the Lord I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you're in trouble. 
there is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way Jesus the way Jesus did not just say I am life he said I am the way a methodology it is still Jesus this man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again your ignorance has been represented in every dimension and now you stand and wonder what do I do you must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word listen if you do not know the ways of God the primary way that we know God is through scripture the second way we know God is through the names of God the third way we know God is through the person of Jesus Jesus the Bible calls him the 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 express image of the invisible God and the last way we know God is through experience there are not many other ways these are the ways allocated and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation it takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know God and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your Christian life are we together two scriptures and then we'll pray thank you Megan. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7 blessed be the name of the Lord Amen. wherefore say unto the children of Israel I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. And with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty arm. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged. However, it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged listen very carefully it while it is true that it is not a the best reflection of the Zoe life if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life it is the flawlessness the dexterity the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of God however because the treasure is in earthen vessels it is also not unusual please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged God in his dealings with men knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ 
and so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life you don't feel bad you can now begin to engage the systems allocated here's what the Bible says many are the afflictions not of a man many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um it says but the lord this is your advantage many are the afflictions of an unbeliever but he will remain there because he does not have the lord as his anchor but many are the afflictions of the righteous the advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the lord who can deliver him out of them all out of them all so the embarrassment is not the challenge listen believers stop allowing challenges to make you feel i'm not a christian maybe it's because i did not pray no no not at all not at all the bible tells us that many are the afflictions so it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook many are the afflictions of the righteous he says but the lord delivered him so god is a deliverer he delivers he delivers him what is deliverance i've taught you deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits no it's the parting away separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress it's called deliverance the moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress be it demonic be it mental be it physical in whatever variation and fashion it comes the lord delivered him out of them all many are the afflictions of the righteous so it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire and while that is happening rent issues financial issues while that is happening maybe his spiritual life is going down while that is happening and he sits and feels bad and some ignorant believer comes and say oh dear it's just because you don't know god your life no no the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but when you remain there then you agree with that situation that the victory of christ is a lie that means when you find yourself in that situation the revelation of the fact that the lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort um, comfortable are we together don't find comfort in that situation you get up and begin to press the woman with the issue of blood knew she understood that she was a daughter of abraham the one who was took uh, you know bound she did not know but this one knew so she could not heal herself but she was already rehearsing oh jesus should come around this place as soon as jesus came she knew already she pressed and touched the helm of his garment never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of god the victorious life your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the the reality of the victory of christ i love naaman the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord 
would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in Israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the Bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something praying about it reading about it there's there has if you are at ease when things are not going well it's a sign that you are not a serious believer it is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself but you should sit down and say look where do you know that god is moving where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i have read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i have not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom you see that now he does not know what to do but one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of god listen my brothers and my sisters the excellency of your knowing god is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection that insistence is what the bible calls faith it is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the affliction so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not barren, no. barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord just because i said thank you for my condition does not mean i will keep quiet i'm thanking you because the bible says listen the bible says in everything gives thanks is a law it has nothing to do with results i give thanks out of obedience but i insist out of faith Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalances why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who... who who just packs death on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh, 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 oh. my lifting has come
assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no mat listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find the way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God so a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done you may be good in your prayer life but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life so you must stay and say thank you Lord for the one I've seen but show me the one I've not seen that's why the Bible says meekness because you see let me tell you this when you have results in one area of your life usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere no you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely that you're a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous that you are prosperous does not mean you have character you have to approach these dimensions per dimension until every one of it and let me tell you this the more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry, continually I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill you one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks. But I came for this miracle service. Thanking you for the one you did March, April. But also admitting that my life is not yet in experience. A reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed Lord I thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere listen let me tell you listen listen to me listen to me listen to me 
the Bible says as I hear you declare before my ears not as you wish there is nothing to be ashamed of are we together now when you come before God this is like a threshing floor when you go to an injection room with the doctor if they say turn and receive injection you don't say ah doctor no 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 no, no. that's that's not his business the doctor is free you are the one who is in trouble are you getting what I'm saying now yes listen to me if there is is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life don't feel bad don't let it tear down what God has done give thanks for the one he has done but release your faith and say Lord I know there is more and I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 praise the Lord we are going to pray Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2 and the Lord visited Sarah as he said there was a day he said it but did not do it there was a day the prophecy was still in motion now the time came when what God said he now did and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said 
and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone pray? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty. My people need to go. But if you don't let them, they cannot serve me. Tell failure. Tell delay. Tell defeat. Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, hey. let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman 
was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel. God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Kaparitata. Shalis kabaru zepediakata. Unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O oh God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please i want you to listen there is a god that doeth wonders and god can arise you see the thing with god is it is the process that takes time when the word comes the word is quick 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 you came with all kinds of prayer requests and you think god will answer them moving one by one just one pronunciation and that's the end of it it's gone so we're going to be very very fast i i sensed please listen very carefully i'm going to pray for people but i sensed that one of the the major things that the lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting god that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life. I truly believe, listen to me, that there is a dimension of favor that the church, not just individuals, must shift into. Otherwise, forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God. This issue of God today, money tomorrow, God today, argument, finance, is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing. You must press for these graces as we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we have come again. You are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time, listen, take away anxiety, just relax. There is a God who is mighty. He will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. All The Lord is showing me, I'm in a vision now, and I'm seeing chains, people's feet with chains. And the Lord is saying, this is what has impeded people from making progress. You are moving, but you are not making progress. I'm about to pray for you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight. I'm seeing chains. I want to pray now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance overflow one just overflow one i'm seeing the power of god come we have to be very fast but i'm praying now you're going to shout that name that is above all names listen this deliverance is not just for you alone some of you came and left your family members for years you are still in the same spot you love god but there is no progress i want to pray for you now at the count of three there's such a strong anointing in the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause those chains now. In the name of Jesus, bring them out. Shake the inside and outside. I decree and declare: be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please, so that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros kabaruda shalakatos kebriandas. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families, what looks like a door, under chains, it must live right now. One, two, three. I command every chain, the Paruta Shikabarakata, chain of darkness, tying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I'm in the chain falling. Yeah. I'm in the chain falling. Now 
and the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals, the Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, at the count of three right now, that anointing is coming on people inside and outside. Those with physical barrenness issues, God is stepping in right now. And those with all kinds of related barrenness issues, God is also stepping in. At the count of three, I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray, it will take lives. People will die like chickens. But we are going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing, will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising call this state i command liberty by the spirit of the living god i command liberty by the power of the holy ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now, now by the Spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma, and it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer. Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in Miracle Service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is Benway she from? You're from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. I don't know you now. I command that devil out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge relative to the grace that confronts it. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. Hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a... Where are you from? From part of Niger. Abuja? A, yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter? Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady as young as she's seen. God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor. Favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
a family of four ladies the chain of marital delay is breaking now no 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 it's, it's not everybody I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now I'm seeing I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four one two three four ladies by the power of please why are they don't please don't bring people out that have not called please why are they here huh where is she from overflow one okay this is your daughter come mama where are you from where are you coming from we are from quarter two sir you are from quarter two quarter two yes sir. i have to pray for you there's somebody here when it's time to pray please no matter what overflow you are in um i want to pray for you by myself when they look at you they will think you are pregnant like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you ma that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine okay we'll, we'll pray for the sick ah. we have to pray oh. is she mad she's just not okay it's before that she was mad but now she's like that. she was mad before yes when uh, it has been now uh, uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to this misery. When she is talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We are going to minister to the sick. We have to. If not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me, my dear? How are you? You can hear me. Yes. I will pray for you, eh? and Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have... Huh? I didn't ask them to come out. I said, protocol, you should be able to work with the people. So that we don't have... You are the one? Come. Where are you from? Paladan. Paladan. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Sir. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, sir. I've done many scans. What did they tell you? Is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant. Yes, Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save him big major marital problem now husband sir come thank you please don't be embarrassed we love you god just wants to save you very little things like this can tear marriage not into two into pieces and want to want to help them where are you coming from sir from summer what are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. And God provision for the word. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is what I'm, I'm saying. I don't know. We're going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, you've been, okay. I will pray for your wife first, eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, beloved Jesus, put your hand there. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, you see how these kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now, watch the power of God. The power of God. This, let me tell you, the anointing is very powerful. It's not for showmanship. It's like a drug. Just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, let me tell you the truth. You will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. And this, I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach. I lose it right now. And I release you. I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone, you have not gone near halfway the budget. Eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Kai. When is the wedding? 12th October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. There's a prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit surprise this my dear brother more than enough for your wedding in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare be healed right now be healed completely in the name of Jesus be healed completely your name is Jennifer okay I'll pray with you come I'll just lay hands on you all this Jennifer I'll just lay hands I'm not getting any hold her Collect the child, please. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, take away this reproach that I see in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. In Jesus' name, please come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come, my dear. May the Lord bless you and honor you. Come. Reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one ushering lady. It's an ushering lady. I'm seeing a mighty deliverance. Reproach is living right now by the Spirit. Whether inside or outside, I'm seeing one ushering lady. The power of God is coming upon her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that miracle take away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. Take away reproach. You are Jennifer. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, my dear. My dear, hold our hands, two of you. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Because both of you need the same miracle. And God is giving you that miracle. He's terminating shame completely from your life there is i'm seeing a man here you are a pastor i know there are many pastors i can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come you are a pastor where sir come again I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't hear, let him come. I'm seeing you. You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you, and I'm praying for you. 
and then I'm praying for you, you will see the miraculous in a very strange way. You may not lay hands on people like this, but the spoken word, as you are speaking, you will see God begin to honor you and things begin to happen. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus, I release you into these dimensions in the spirit. And everything that has been said, I command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is releasing speed. Now please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the... Ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the spirit of the living god i command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare speed over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I declare it you are not wasting your time you are receiving speed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand just that media stand I'm seeing and it's still the same grace for speed I'm seeing media stand I'm seeing that grace there are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you and I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, there are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic. The prophetic. I will do an impartation by the end of the service. But two ladies and three men. A real grace. Real grace. The eyes. The eyes to see. I quicken that grace. Quicken that anointing. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we are wasting our time. We are going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where did they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, see let me teach you something you see the word of god is very powerful believe it believe it don't, don't sit arguing and saying will god touch me will he change my life no 
God will more than surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for this lady. And I decree and declare. May the Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things, but when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet, because you will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus May that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame in the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Come, this man, this. What do you do? A businessman, sir. A businessman. Where? In Dandume, sir. Come again. Dandume, Dandume, Katsina State. Katsina State. Yes. In Dandume. I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope sir. you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Naemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka. I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing... I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry. But listen now. This doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry, but the call of God has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call. I'm stretching my hands. Lord, I don't know where these people are. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Online, in the main auditorium here, Father, anyone that your call up is upon his or her life, I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now. And let them know that it's not just their imagination. I declare by the anointing and by the Spirit of God. Draw them into their various callings. Into the various mantles, the trainings, the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the Spirit. To become mighty men and women of God. Name of Jesus Christ. What's your name? 
Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now. But I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage or the disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now. That anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction. Especially geographic direction. The Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying. They don't know exactly where to be based. This, is, this, this sounds funny. But the Lord... There is an anointing that is coming, giving you clear direction in dreams, visions, prophetic intuitions. Some of you are saying, Lord, should I stay? Should I go? Should I travel? Should I stay in the country, out of the country? I'm praying right now, the grace for accurate direction. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God. We have to pray and trust God. We're going to do this very, very, very fast. I keep seeing something in this front row. Just these people in front. I kept ignoring it, but I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that God is showing me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was lost. Restoration shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen there is somebody here the Lord is bringing an anointing into your life you are getting into oil listen, listen I'm serious now please listen to what I'm saying this can be a life and death prayer you see this spirit of death that is just sweeping around killing people like chickens all around someone will just say headache and fall down and die i pray for you in the name of jesus christ i forbid the earth from receiving your body i forbid the earth from receiving your body and i declare every spirit of kidnapping whether in zaria here kaduna that would just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. Two more prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit, signs, wonders, miracles the gifts of the spirit I call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life I speak to you, please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic, the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone who is weary. You are tired. Life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency. 
and it's as though you are about to give up it's like the grace to continue is not there by the spirit of god i supply fresh fire for the journey every leader here whether a campus leader prayer group leader bible study leader church pastor whatever kind of group i pray for you the dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups your fellowship burning i supply that grace upon you now we prophesy over zaria we speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends you lost valuable relationships in the name of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God I call it back into your life now I call it back into your life now our call as believers listen to me please listen let me say it loud and clear to the hearing of everyone God's priority in life listen his priority for you is not to give you a certificate or a husband or a wife or a car or breakthrough or marriage he wants to bless you with all of these things but listen to me his priority is that you will know him the primary call of a believer is that you conform to the stature the character the fullness of the measure of Christ this is what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 it was on account of this assignment he gave gifts unto men some apostles prophets teachers evangelists pastors for the equipping of the saints that they the saints will come into this oneness hallelujah if your priority listen if your pursuit for god is tied to anything other than him there is a rude disappointment waiting for you at the end of the journey i assure you hallelujah There's so many people who chase God because of the problems in their families or the, the, the challenges in society or fear because of the insecurity. But you must pursue him for who he is. So our call, write it, our call as Christians is to number one, conform conform to the character the stature the nature to conform and then number two in partnership with the holy spirit to be an extension of the ministry of jesus upon the earth in partnership with the holy spirit this is why we call this koinonia intimacy 
our intimacy with the Holy Spirit brings us to a place of oneness. We know his ways. Listen, listen. The greatest thing you should celebrate in Koinonia is not the miracles. Thank God for the wonderful miracles and the works of Jesus. But did you know that a man can just have gifts and really not know God? The Bible says he showed his way to Moses, but his act to the nation of Israel and we live in a generation where men and women are captivated and there's a place for the miraculous it's God's biblical tool for publicity that men will come and see what Jesus is doing of his acts to know him this is where the men are separated from the boys because knowing God comes with a price it's not cheap, it's not free it will constrain you and it will cost you something it will cost you to lay aside your ambition. It will cost you to lay aside a lot of things because he will not share his place with any other. But when you do, happy are you because in it you will find life. You will find true fulfillment. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people seem to have a depth of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. When you come around them, you are captured immediately by a hunger for God. Hallelujah. There are certain people like that. They must not be praying. Once you come around just the circumference of their presence, there is a hunger that captures you. You go back crying. Their presence introduces a reality. The existence of a personality. They give life to this mystery called God in the earth realm. When you look at them, the way they speak, there's something about their life. They don't look like humans. They may even be cracking jokes, but there is a oneness. There is an evidence hallelujah there are several believers that claim they know the holy spirit we live in a generation where everyone believes they know the holy spirit but then if i know pastor jakes there should be an evidence of our friendship and our oneness is that correct there's no evidence in the life of many believers that they have genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We talk, we sing, we call his name. Take your place. Take your place. Who is the yo? Who is the person you are talking about? Let me tell you something. Many people do not desire to really know God beyond the nominal level of Christianity. And the average Christian in Nigeria has a crippled understanding and desire for God. There's no platform to put a fire for God. The average church in this country teaches us that once you just know the basic principles of God that are responsible for getting life moving on, that's all right. And while that is true and that is good, those are the fundamentals. And sometimes we run into the mistake of camping around the God who was. But we forget that there are other dimensions, the God who is. And even the one who is to come. He said, holy is the Lord God who was. But he didn't just stop in his greatness of yesterday. He's ever unfolding. And he requires that men begin to seek him, the God who is. A revelation of that which he seeks to communicate to his people in the now. And that there is more to come. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw the cherubims crying holy. Right until revelation in the Isle of Patmos, John saw them and they had not stopped. How many hundreds of years they were still calling. Because every time they will see a new dimension of him that will compel them to worship. 
And so it's very sad when you see the average Christian in Nigeria, there is this coldness. I'm not talking of backsliding. I'm talking of a lack of passion and a desire to see that there can be more in God. Hallelujah. And so many people sit down and we are satisfied with where we are. And even when we sing songs like more of you, when we sing songs like I love you, when we sing songs like show me more, you know, all these kinds of things, we really do not mean it from the depth of our hearts. You know why? Because there is no evidence. There is no evidence. The Lord began to talk to me and he said, son, there should be evidence. Evidence. Listen. If you know how majestic the presence of God is, let me tell you something. There must be a signature upon your life that you are a man of his presence. This is what brings the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Many people try to look for the anointing now without the Holy Spirit himself. Hallelujah. But God designed it in such a way that authentic grace is a derivative of your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's your reward for encountering him when angels begin to manifest in this place there is an evidence in the earth realm that shows that there are angelic activities and so i i am very disturbed about a believer who is seemingly born again and filled with the holy ghost seemingly progressing in god and then there is no evidence hallelujah so many people sing all kinds of songs so many people pray for hours so many people spend time roaming around but there is no evidence in their lives if jakes has a perfume and i hug him and i hold him or i wear his clothes for long is it true that when i pass you you will know hallelujah shouldn't there be a fragrance of his majesty Shouldn't there be a deposit, a leftover, a sign that you were with him? The Bible says the disciples were with Jesus to the point that their physical appearances were altered. Judas had to use a kiss to identify who was Jesus among them. They had come into oneness. Koinonia. The Bible says when they saw Peter speaking to the Jerusalem council, they looked at him. And they said, is this not a fisherman? But he had assumed a level of oneness with his master that he had begun to manifest like him. How many of you have seen two people who are together, a protege and a mentor, and later you see him begin to talk like that person, act like that person. That is a symbol. Hallelujah. You can just hear a man of God preach and you know this is a pastor in living faith or this is a pastor in deeper life. There is an evidence. I'm asking you a question tonight. What is your evidence? What evidence do you have to convince the world that you are truly a man that has the presence of God upon your life? There must be a genuine evidence. If it is true that your prayer is to God Almighty, if it is true that you love him the way you sing, if it is true that you have passion, should there not be a signature in your life? That demonstrates to the world the name Christian was an encapsulation that was giving us an evidence a symbol certain people behave like Jesus so much so that they were given a name Christians every Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday we have millions of people all over nigeria trooping to different churches different camps different um, um, um places of worship auditoriums and you ask them where are you going to they say i'm going to worship they've been doing that for years 10 years 20 years they've given birth to children but you look at their life there is no evidence of genuine intimacy they pray in tongues they call his name they stand on stage and we preachers do it. You say, Holy Spirit, the one I know, the one I love. 
but there is a distance in between you and the person you are talking about have you seen anybody claim to know a stranger and the way the person is talking you will know this person is not used to this stranger or this person is not used to the person he's talking about many people truly do not know the holy spirit because when you know him i used to hear catherine coolman cry benny hinn said it that catherine coolman used to cry and say he's all that i have he's my best friend it doesn't make sense until you have encountered him listen let me tell you something when jesus appeared to me i knew why the apostles loved him to death hallelujah i knew why these guys ran with a passion for god the bible says even in hebrews 11 that some people had the opportunity to escape but they refused as a demonstration of their commitment to him what is your evidence we sing beautiful songs about his presence and his majesty beautiful songs breathe on me i look to you for life breathe on me i look to you for life every time you're singing people know if you really know the person you are talking about you can come and sing you can come and shout you can come and preach you can jump around but i'm telling you the truth there is an evidence and tonight i'm going to show you we'll be examining from our from god's word and i trust that this brief examination will create a passion in us because at the end of it some of us will find out that we need to go back into the place of genuine hunger we either left god on the way in pursuit for many things hallelujah There must be an evidence the first thing that happens when you begin to expose yourself to the presence and the glory of god in the glory i will stand i will stand and lift my hand in the glory i'll receive every miracle you have for me it's in your glory i will stand lord i will stand and i will lift my hands in your glory i'll receive every miracle that you have for me so take my heart and mold it take my mind this is my prayer lord transform it take my will tonight conform it to yours to yours oh lord this is our prayer tonight take our heart and mold it take our minds Lord transform it take our will conform it to yours to yours to yours oh Lord the Bible calls him it says that God is light and in him there is no shadow of turning so when you truly step into the light of his glory listen the first evidence listen 
is that there is an exposition of the true state of your heart there is an unveiling there is a revealing of who you truly are in the light of him until you go to his presence whatever you call yourself you are telling lies his presence the bible says that he is the revealer the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart until you have encountered the glory of god you truly do not know your true state isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 the bible says in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah although a prophet i saw the lord he said when i saw the lord i saw him high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple and the bible says when isaiah saw these things he said woe is me if anyone had told him before that encounter that woe is you isaiah you would have insulted the person but the glory of god reveals the true state that men cannot see that pulpit can hide are you listening to me that suits can hide that grammar and english can hide the glory of god opens up the true you and reveals to you the true state of your heart this is how you know one who is a man with intimacy with the holy ghost he exposes the state of your heart and brings you to a point where you find out that you truly are inadequate without him regardless of what your revelation of your authority is you come to a point where you realize that god if you do not have mercy on me then i am a dead man without you this is what brings these kinds of songs all about you it's all about you it's all about you Jesus for many years I was preaching doing great things signs and wonders and miracles but the day Jesus appeared to me I think for over a period of one year I was not myself it was as if I was the most filthy person on the earth now it's impossible to describe some of these things his majestic presence when you stand before him and see him in the beauty of his holiness his majestic presence it does something to you you will never be the same let me tell you something no matter how hardened you are no matter how hardened you are the human spirit was designed to respond to the majestic presence of his maker and if you truly encounter his presence something will happen radically in your life this issue of coming to church and loving god and not seeing a need for change and adjustment is a sign of the absence of the presence of god hallelujah psalms 139 let's look at a few scriptures I want to be very brief so we can pray this is not a teaching really it's just an exhortation psalms 139 verse 23 the psalmist a man who we know to be a man of his presence had this to say 139 verse 23 search me oh god stop look up do you know what it takes for a man to open up himself and say god probe me in this country when they told politicians that they want to probe them and find out their accounts did they agree you know the level of honesty and brokenness it takes for a king to open up himself before god and say lord search me he says search me oh god i'm not hiding it from you search me people can call me names people can call me a great person but before you search me this is an evidence an evidence of genuine intimacy with the presence of god that consistently you are aware of your inadequacy not unto guilt and condemnation are you listening to me but unto a passion 
imparting upon you reverence and genuine respect for his majesty. Is that an evidence in your life? If that has not happened in your life, then you see that there is no genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit like you claim. There is no hiding it. This is a clear universal litmus test. It should work for everybody. Because the more you see him, the Bible says you are changed. But for you to be changed, God will show you your present state and compare it with his own. And you will be compelled. Man only embraces change if you show him that what he's about to embrace is greater than what he's living. Otherwise, he will not live it. Hallelujah. So you must see a higher light. The Bible says when Saul was on his way to Damascus, full of passion, he was going to go and kill the Christians. The Bible says a light. Kabadosha labaka. A light appeared to him. In an instant, Saul said, Lord, he called him Lord. That's the byproduct of an encounter. That a man who has been hardened, who went to collect permission to kill people in a moment. This is what happens when an unbeliever comes to sit down in a place. If that environment has genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it should not leave that person the same. You see the reason why many Christians do not have a genuine fire for God? We sit around unbelievers and there is no sign whatsoever. So it's either God is not there or there's something wrong with us. Hallelujah. Jesus met the Samaritan woman just sitting with her in a little conversation. What happened? The glory of God wrapped her in such a way and a manner. The Bible says she even forgot about the issue of fetching water and ran to the city and began to say, come and see a man who has told me all about me. The presence of God. The glory of God. A symbol that your heart is open at all times and you say, Lord, search my heart. In other words, I'm ready to listen to anything you tell me. If you tell me that there is lust hidden in my heart is true, you are not a liar. If you tell me that there is a state of wickedness hidden in my heart, you are true. Hallelujah. It takes a level of genuine brokenness and love for God to come to a point where God can probe your life and you are not ashamed of what the result of his findings will be. Because we live in a world of psychophancy and lies. Are you listening to me? Men have itching ears wanting to hear only what they want. It takes men who love God genuinely. Especially for those of us in ministry. When you are in ministry, a lot of times our churches are full of liars and psychophants. Men who always want to say everything. The man of God is stealing. He's a wonderful, lovely man of God. The man of God is declaring a counsel that is not consistent with God. He's a wonderful man of God. The man of God is sleeping around and doing everything. He's a wonderful man of God. Because it's, it takes a level of brokenness. And here the psalmist shows us one symbol, one evidence of a genuine encounter with the presence of God. Search me, O oh God. And know my heart. You know what it means? Commune with my heart. It's the same word that used for a man knowing a woman. Know my heart. Relate with my heart. Oh God, I want to know what your verdict is concerning my heart. It says, and if there is any wicked way in me, he said what? Lead me out of it. This is the first evidence of a genuine encounter. Genuine intimacy. When your intimacy with the Holy Ghost is genuine, this is one of the evidences that should show. Let me tell you something. A man of the secret place will never struggle with a habit or challenge for long. You watch him. You see something you don't like in a few months, he's gone. That's a symbol that is a man that understands the power. Of intimacy with the Holy Spirit because if you truly have a secret place and you have ears to hear because some people don't have ears the Bible says he that has an ear that means some people don't have it he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church many of us have been so hardened towards the dealings of God 
Every time we go to pray, listen, and you see, this affects your kind of prayer. We must graduate from this childish, need-driven Christianity and step into a place of genuine maturity that will bring us power and grace. God, I pray for myself. I pray for my mother. I pray for my father. I pray for my this. I pray for my dad. Lord, do this and that. If my auntie doesn't give me money, she won't sleep. I command arrows of restlessness. What kind of thing is that? That's the average petition of the church. Listen, let me tell you something. If that is the kind of heritage we want to pass to our children, then the church is going to have a serious problem in the next five to ten years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John Knox prayed over Scotland and he turned and was not talking about himself. He said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. This is someone's prayer point. Give me Scotland or I die. That's a level of brokenness and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Where God's own need becomes your driving force, not, no longer your own. You have so traded away your personal desire and passion to take up that of his majesty and that becomes your prayer point. All you are concerned about in the place of prayer is, Lord, what is your heartbeat? And I will run in synchrony. Hallelujah. You go and read many books that are written on prayer. Very few of them are written on prayer for matured believers. Most of them is just how to get your needs met, which is wonderful. But let me tell you something. You cannot tie your pursuit for God on just your needs being met. No, God is bigger than that. This is the reason why many people's Christianity does not last. Hallelujah. One day you are checking an album and you see your father's picture. And you see that he was the prayer secretary of one fellowship in 1971. And there's the man in the beer parlor now. What happened? Because the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Faulty foundation. Christianity that is a, a derivative of hunger. Not genuine passion. And that's the platform on which many altar calls are made in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And so we tell people, come. This is an end to all your sorrow. Listen to me. I hope you know. I believe in the works of Jesus Christ. I believe in the blessings that come. We preach it here. But this is not God's priority. God's priority is that men will come out of a sincere need for God in their lives. That's the kind of salvation that will last. When you tell someone to come and you are giving him a bet that after six months, his life will change and he gives his life to Christ and there is someone in their family dies after two weeks. He begins to question your, your bait to the kingdom. Hallelujah. And you promise the person that the wave is five or six carryover courses and his final result came out and we were still on the board and he has to take it again. At that point, the person does not see a need to pursue God again. You see that? Because you have, you have brought God to be an errand boy whose job is to go and bring things according to our lust. And those are the kinds of people. The Bible says that God cannot commit the true riches of heaven because they will disappoint God. They are the kind of people that will never walk in authentic power. You know why? It will destroy them. Hear me. I tell you the truth. If you truly, truly want to walk in glory, you must open up your heart for God to search. I do this all the time. People call me names. People say a lot of good things. Thank God for that. I receive text messages all the time. Sometimes I pick up the text messages and I drop it on the floor and I lie down on the carpet. I say, Lord, this is deceitful because it's not true. Affect my life. Breathe on me, Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me, I look to you for life. That you refuse to let, see, 
at that point the words and the commendations of men have no hold over your life again whether they call you bishop stand or apostle stand or prophet stand or whatever it is those things have no hold over you that means he has had your heart lord i give you my heart many people gave him his hands some gave him some fingers some gave him one part of their ears the other part is in babylon one has entered every breath that i take every moment i'm away see those that wrote these songs were not looking for money they were not trying to produce album to look for money they had a genuine passion and out of the overflow of their personal hunger they wanted to infect the world with that hunger in an attempt to bring men to the realm that they were relating with god in. but right now we have all kinds of people singing these songs and you know that their hearts are not open let me tell you something the first evidence of an open heart is the complete destruction of pride the first evidence that you have opened up your heart because pride is usually hinged on something you know or you can do the moment you open your heart the first thing god does is to kick out anything that is not him have your way in me that you open up your heart and say lord men call me a great man but what is your what is your analysis hallelujah men call you a great servant of god men call you a great this and that great this and that you see let me tell you something in all sincerity i know i can't stop it but i fear greatly when people begin to give all kinds of commendations because those things can be deceitful listen the greatest enemy of success is the last one you had not failure failure has never made anybody a failure failure always gives you reason to move higher but the last success you had brings about complacency and a sense of relaxation any man who is a man of intimacy with the holy spirit there is always more you are always dissatisfied with where you are and there is a genuine passion to rise higher it's all about you jesus whether on stage whether as a celebrity he's got your heart you are not saying lord let me keep my heart with you like a bank and when i get to a point where i feel i do not need you i come back and i say lord that heart i gave you is there any can i give you money and collect the heart Will your Christianity last in the face of honor? Will it last when all your financial needs are met and 80% of your prayer request is gone? Will it last when the husband finally comes now? Will it last when the child... Do you know that for many people, the lifetime of their Christianity is when they receive a, re a result. The moment a result comes, that's it no more hunger hallelujah one of our dear ladies in this place was speaking with me a few days ago and was telling me that while she was on campus she was the one who was wayward and not serious and there was a fiery sister when i say fiery i mean genuine fire she was the one who used to hold her hands and say go and pray go and do this go and do that and she told me she said do you know this lady right now that she went to her house and she saw another man married man big man with his wife alive and healthy nothing has happened the wife is at home with the children hallelujah and her small house the man came here to visit her what suddenly happens to it do you know the level of fall it takes for you to forget where you started with god that's a level of absence of intimacy for a long time to a point that the bible says your conscience has been seared with fire that a man falls from a great height to an extent that you who was making a vow you see that's why when you say lord i live for you god will say i'm not yet sure 
I'm not yet sure. Open up your heart. Many of us have tendencies that are enshrined in our heart. The day one million enters your hand, God will have to use prophetic words to beg you and say, remember, I'm alive. Many of us have not tasted honor. You don't know what it means for people to hold your Bible and move around and say the man of this and that and that and that. And you are like, so there is a possibility to live a higher level of life like this. Can God still find your commitment? Will money or fame or power or any of these things affect your prayer life and affect your sacrifice? Can you still go down on your knees when you are wearing a designer's of one million? Say, Kai, this carpet is rough. The same carpet you knelt down in to bring you the grace and the breakthrough. When you were taking Gary and adding all of this, you had energy. But now you eat chicken, you take pasta and every kind of thing. Italian dishes. Those Italian dishes wiped out the presence of God from your life. The Bible says, whose God is their belly? Take what I'm saying very seriously tonight. Because the kind of church we have is the type that if God does not bring breakthrough after one year, many Christians are leaving him. They are packing their load. God is like one of the many things they are trying. Hallelujah. You know, there's this game people used to play. Ladies, I pass here. No way. I pass here, no way. So people pass different things and then they came to Jesus. I pass here, once there's no way, they, they follow too. They are looking for something else. That's why people resolve to go to herbal medicine when it looks like. It's a sign. See, it's a depth of your conviction. When you try and try, they say, Kai, come home. Come home. They say, let's watch and see what God will do. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my everything. So if you are here and peradventure you became a Christian because of these many reasons. You'll be born again afresh tonight and get serious because that thing you did was not born again. Hallelujah. Oh God, if you don't give my sister a husband after two weeks, I know you are not Lord. You mean it. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Listen, I want your Christianity to be rooted on an unshakable foundation. That's why many of you have seen some of your mothers. I've said it here and here again. Many of them loved God. That's why in the height of their blessings and everything, you still see them sing songs. And when there's a bereavement, when, because you see, the kind of Christianity that we are teaching the church is such that, what do you tell a family that has been bereaved right now? I believe in miracles. I believe in raising the dead. But not every dead person will rise up. And you will have to console a dying family. So what will you say? You enter there and say they don't have faith. Many pastors do not have messages for bereaved people. Many pastors don't have messages for people in failure because they have pretended to divorce themselves from those experiences. The, the luxury of the palace have made them like Esther to forget the needs of the people they were called to serve. They have intercourse with the king's meat and forgotten the dignity of holiness. I pray that none of us will become those kind of people. I told God anything I've said it I don't know how many times and I mean it anything that you're going to give me and I cannot give you back I put a prophecy in the air that it should never come to me never and I mean it from the depths of my heart when I say anything let your mind grow wild including my life anything do you love him that much many people want power you want grace but God will search your heart so number one it exposes your heart a heart that is exposed to the scrutiny of God tonight we are going to open up ourselves and you cry because there are many of us the way we are going 
you may not last in your journey it's not a curse it's not a bad statement but we are not hinged on a foundation that is on Christ hallelujah write the following scriptures down you read them we don't have time Psalms 51 verse 10 Matthew 13 verse 25 when you are truly growing John 15 verse 2 it says he that beareth fruit my father will prune so pruning is a sign that you are bearing fruit Bible says do not despise the chastening of the Lord see let me tell you something believers I'm telling you from today and forever you must dedicate time for what I call soul searching with God periodically in your life I know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus but do you know the Bible says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God I want your Christian experience to be authentic. I cry to God every time. It doesn't make me guilty. It doesn't make me weak. But it makes me strong. Because in my weakness, I'm ever conscious of his power. And so every time I make any boast, I make it out of the understanding that I'm strengthened in my inner man by his grace. Number two. And a byproduct, let me finish up with number one. You will find out you are walking in character and in the fruits of the spirit. When God deals with your heart, it doesn't happen at once. It happens level by level. Look at me. Let me tell you something. Come, my brother. You see, this gentleman, listen, this guy can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? He can be walking in signs and wonders, but there are issues in his heart. God will not deal with it yet. Because at that level, the dealings will be too heavy and it will discourage his journey. Are you listening to me? So God will just keep quiet as if there is nothing there. This is what a lot of believers mistake him. And they think God is careless. Do you realize the Bible says in Matthew, I gave you the scripture. Matthew 13 verse 25. We will not talk about that because of time. The Bible says that when men slept, what happened? They saw tears among the wheat and when they got up the disciples told the master in that parable they said should we remove he said no 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 because as you are doing that the 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 wheat is still tender are you listening to me and you may not differentiate the wheat and the tear so if you pull it at that point you may destroy innocent things so if god begins to hammer on some things in your life it may be too drastic and it will discourage you so god will allow you to continue so you still have a lot of things that are not consistent with the way of God. There's pride, there's arrogance, there's everything, but you are still seeing the anointing. And every time you go to pray, God doesn't talk to you about it. Hallelujah. Then one day when you grow firm enough to be able to take that level of dealing, now you are praying suddenly. You are praying and you see God begin to tell you, okay, let's deal with this problem of pride or let's deal with this problem of lust. And you are saying, Lord, me, lost. I forgot about the issue of pride or these sins. And God will say, really? Do you trust me? And then God will expose yourself to you. And you will see and you say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And then he will grant you grace and empower you. Up you go to a higher realm in the spirit. This is how men grow. This is what the Bible calls spiritual growth. What many people are doing is numerical advancement in the earth realm, not spiritual growth. They are going around Jericho forever and they are not growing. God bless you, sir. Number two, let's hurry up. When you have genuine intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it will conquer unbelief permanently in your life. Communion is the true key to activating the faith of the Son of God in your life. For you cannot trust a man you do not know. See, faith was not designed just to stand. It has to be faith in something or someone. And the degree to which you know that someone 
is a degree to which you can stand. Look at me. We have been relating for a while, correct? Week after week, months after months, years after years. Based on that, there are some things I can tell you. If I tell you right now, um, this is my daughter, I mean physical daughter, you just laugh. Why? Because you know me, correct? If this place were full of visitors, and I tell them, come little girl, this is my daughter. They say, ah, ah, can you imagine? Now you are looking as young as, as if she's your younger sister. I can afford to mislead people based on their lack of knowledge of me. Correct? But when knowing me gives them an opportunity to walk with me and ascertain certain things about me over time. Are you listening to me? This is why the place of prayer is the place where the shell of the word breaks forth and releases genuine faith. Did you hear the testimony of our sister? She said she has boldness. Now let me tell you, that boldness came not just by studying the word, it came by prayer. When you study the word and you go to the place of prayer, it gives you boldness. The Bible says the apostles in Acts chapter 4 were praying. It was in prayer they asked God, they said, grant us boldness. And so the Lord begins to talk to you. And while you are praying, one scripture that you have been studying hits your spirit. And a light comes and there is a level, there is a reality. Hallelujah. Suddenly you are praying or you are in the place of intimacy, of worship with the spirit. And you begin to hear certain sounds. Or you begin to see signs of angels. Will you ever disbelieve that there are angels? It has what? It has solidified your conviction. You see, one of the reasons why you hear us speak like this is because we are speaking from a depth of conviction. There have been experiences that have crystallized our conviction. Hallelujah. What experience do you have that has solidified your, exp your, your Christian experience? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Communion is the key to conquering unbelief. It does that by exposing your spirit to the atmosphere of God's reality. You need to experience God's reality to know that he is able. I like that song that says, God is able to do just what he says he will do. But you listen, you must have a real experience. If your sister has been pregnant, and they tell you that the baby is so big and they have to cut her open you need a miracle correct at that point a dimension of god is about to be experienced hallelujah if it so happens that by whatever supernatural means she gives birth now the next time you hear someone prophesying and say in the name of jesus we command impossible births to happen will you believe your faith has been strengthened you see how experiences crystallize our knowledge of god Many of us lack the sufficient experiences. Why do we call someone a general and someone a captain? What's the difference? What's the difference? When the captain hears the sound of a gun, bah! He can panic and he can do all of this. And the general laughs. He said, they've even pointed gun at me one day. I didn't die. So all this nonsense you are doing. Let me tell you something. The psalmist says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. It takes a man are you listening to me? Whose convictions about God has been strong. So all those things, run to the village, run to this, run to this, eh, let's add Christianity and this. It's a sign that you are not convicted. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number three. The third evidence of genuine intimacy is freshness of insight and revelation. Freshness. Don't tell me you are in intimacy with God and you will not have a message. Let me tell you something. When in all sincerity, when I hear men of God come on stage and say, well, I didn't prepare for this message. I really don't even know what to say. Uh, whatever. Let's just look at something. Let me tell you in all sincerity, that is a sign 
that is such a sign of lack of intimacy with the Holy Spirit because at every time you encounter the Holy Spirit there is a message if I if I have a way of planning for koinonia to meet every day every day because according to the syllables that we have to cover we are far behind Sometimes people meet me and say, ah, you just finish a ministration. You go for another one. You minister and then you go and you are talking about different things. And many people do not know that many of my messages are experiences. I share some of them with you to encourage you. Sometimes I'm sleeping, minding myself. Having a sound sleep. And then I see things in the spirit and I wake up and God tells me, share it. That's how messages like commanding results. And so on and so forth came. These things were not just rehearsals. When you are a man of the secret, can I tell you something? When you are a man of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there is freshness. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of what? My enemies. Ah, I'm quoting the wrong scripture. I thought I'll find what I want in that scripture. Let's go to Psalm. Psalm what have I quoted now? Let's go to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not, yes, that's the scripture, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, standing, sitting, walking, all they are wrong, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day. As a result, what will happen? He shall be like a tree. That is what? Other trees have to wait for rainy season. But this other tree is planted by the rivers. As a result, it yields its fruit in season. And whose leaves does not wither. Freshness. Not necessarily newness. Freshness. That's why you can hear people like Kenneth E. Hagin teaching on faith for over 30 years. And you have series and series. Every time a message goes stale, it's a sign that it did not come out from the bowels of the spirit. Because if it comes out, it will come with a touch of eternity. Even if you've heard it before, it will come with a freshness like the dew of heaven. How many mornings have you had in your life? Morning and evening. Many, isn't it? But everyone comes fresh. That's how it, because it comes from a realm of eternity. There's no morning that will bore you. You say, Kai, I've had, um, maybe I'm 30 years or I'm 40 years and I've had so many mornings or many, mm -mm, they come from a fresh realm. Every time you sleep, even after 30 or 40 years, you still look forward to, that's why the Bible tied the message of God to the morning. He said they are new every morning. Freshness. Many of us lack freshness in our lives. You hear someone speaking and you know that this is the only message that he said since five years ago. And that's why you hear people talk about the God who was. Ah, I remember we were in a crusade in 1971 and God did this and that. And I remember the Lord told me something five years ago. The Lord did this. What is God telling you now? Did he run away? Say after me, freshness. Whether a man, a ministry, an organization, stagnation is a sign of the absence of the presence of God. There should be freshness. Suddenly, when you think you have come to the end of everything you know, suddenly. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says the path of the just is what? As a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That means if I look at you, Pastor Steve, in 2000 and maybe six or seven, by the time I see you in 2014, I should see some, an evidence in your life that shows me you have been in the presence of God. How many of you have seen a little child and maybe when you came to school or maybe didn't see the person for five years and the next thing you turn and ah, you even see the guy has one small beard I say ah, ah, bala, 
You mean this? Now our children have become men. That's a sign that he's alive. Correct? That's a sign that he's alive. Those that you see them looking the same way after 20 years, you know that there's a problem. Because that's not the normal way people should be. Correct? There's a problem. Maybe a health problem, genetic mutation or whatever, but there is a problem. So, when you tell me that you got born again, and after one solid year, listening to the word of God, praying, engaging yourself in the kingdom, and there is no evidence, there is no freshness in your life. You can't share anything. You cannot lead a small prayer meeting. Hallelujah. There are so many people. After one year, two years, three months, four months, they say just share with us something briefly. And you want to enter the grass. Hey, 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 go, what will I? I understand there's, there's that initial fear. It's not a fear. It should not be a fear of lack of the presence of God. It should be that, okay, I've not done it before. But when you stand there, suddenly grace will come upon you. If you don't deny God in the secret, he will never disappoint you in the open. You know why God disappoints many men of God? Because they don't know him in the secret. We can come and call us all kinds of names. Lily of the lion of the, uh, the tribe of Judah, lily of the valley, what and what, rose of Sharon, uh, uh, silver or gold, all kinds of names. My God, you promised me you wouldn't disappoint me. And God is saying, Me? When? Asking the angels, When did we say, When did we say, Who sent this guy? But when you are a man or a woman of the secret place, you can stand and sing and say, I know my God will answer me. This is why we have the confidence to organize miracle services. This is why we have the confidence to gather people every week because we are certain. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. That's why he blesses us with new songs. If you leave Koinonia after three or four months, you will come and hear a new song. It's a sign of freshness. Some of these songs come through dreams. Some of these songs come through people in the worship team. Some come through congregations. You note any church or denomination or, or, or group of believers. Where God is there, there are fresh things. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song because he expects that his presence should give you a new experience that should produce new things. freshness 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 psalm 36 verse 9 kabala rabo shanda kratisa la mokasi adaba ambrosa secreti shala kosibana hasi adaba lord i love your presence i love that song i love i love i love your presence I love, I love. I love your what? What's the other part? At least I'm talking to God, not you. Psalm 36, verse what? Nine. For with thee is the fountain of light. See, he said, In thy light do we see light. That means when you see his light, you will have direction. The shadow of God is not black. His shadow itself is light. So he says, you, have, you are the fountain of life. As a derivative of your light, if we are truly with you, then we should not walk in darkness. Hallelujah. Number four. And I'll stop here. The fourth thing you receive or the fourth evidence of genuine intimacy is authentic unction and authority in the spirit what did i say authentic unction has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with men of god if you actually meet god and his power dimension does not rub off on you it's not god you met find out the name of that person you met because he's a habali somewhere if he's god the God of Israel. The Bible says the mountains keep like lambs in his presence. The majestic one who with the breath of his nostrils parted the Red Sea and you are spending time 
day after day, week after week, his power dimension, that unction of the spirit will rub off on you. That's why you see many people. They don't even know. Let me tell you something. When I began my pursuit for God, I was not looking for power. I'm not sure any of us was looking for power. We used to just go and pray and fellowship. We didn't even know the anointing was on us. I'll never forget it, Jimmy. When it comes to things like this, I like using him. Demonstration students were in Sunday school building. He had been angry because he was laying hands, laying hands, nothing is happening. And every time you come back and complain, you know, Jimmy, it can be very dramatic. And that very day, we prayed. And he laid hands on the lady. And she started moving back small. You can oh my God, you can imagine the white smile. He didn't carry that hand away. He laid it there. I saw one gentleman doing it in chapel. One day I entered. I didn't stop him. Sometimes just leave the people. It's an encouragement. You don't know how they've suffered looking for that sign. Hallelujah. And so when you touch the lady and she's almost falling, you now move from your secret place and come out where everybody can see and say, now the power of God will move and act all kinds of drama. And God will stop you. It's an encouragement. A day will come, you'll draw your ears. Oh, that's too much. Let's go back to work. A day should come when you pray for the sick and someone can come back with a testimony. You've prayed for 1,000 people. Nobody got healed. You, you are not in the presence of God. There must be an evidence. The Bible says, Elijah prayed. There was no rain. He prayed again. There was no rain. At the seventh time, what happened? There was an evidence. Let me tell you something. If it is the genuine presence of God, an evidence must show. A day will come, you will stand close to someone who is possessed. And without talking, suddenly, you see the demon just manifest. And you say, go, leave the person in the name of Jesus. This is how we grew up. That's why our prayer lives were exciting because we're, we're wondering what new will God do today. Hallelujah. I remember that time every night was getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. We're so happy. I remember one time a Jimmy gathered his, his classmates and brought them industrial design. Gathered all of them and said, come and see what God will do with you this night. Gathered them and brought them to chapel. We loved prayer because prayer was not this boring thing I see people do. It was, it, we looked forward to exciting times. And he was going to pray for them. After preaching a sound message, prayed for them, nothing happened. They were tired, they tried and tried again. That day when we were going home, Jimmy was angry. He said God would have at least, that he knew what would have happened to their faith. If, if, if they didn't speak, at least they would have fallen. But today by the grace of God we didn't start by speaking over congregations and having the power of God fall on people we started step by step but that step was an evidence that encouraged us and we said man these tongues is working no less fire on and we went for crusade my brother when we went for crusade we saw things that encouraged us so rain had not fallen in that land and it fell correct Hallelujah. Jakes was the head of council in that time. Bishop was our treasurer. We saw the miracle working power of God. Is your Christianity exciting? It will not be exciting if you are not in the presence of God. There's nothing new. God is not speaking to you. He's not challenging you. God can tell you, go and tell Ella that I will bless her. And that's your first time of the word of knowledge. You look forward to that time. You're shivering. By the time you get there, you've forgotten the message. You have to find one scripture. Oh, when you stand before them. You see, this is your Christian experience being rich. Many people's Christian life is dry and boring. Because you don't look forward to any experience. I always look forward to Friday because I don't even know what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes people send me messages. Like Grace sent me a message this evening. She told me how that she saw... A, 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 a vision of the meeting this night I was so excited I said this is the kind of thing I want to hear that one day you were challenged in your health and you say let me try it let me not take drugs this time around if it gets too bad there's chemists they are not locked but let me try 
Say after me, authentic power. See, whoever you got your power from, you will depend on the person for the rest of your life. That's why some people can never leave some men of God. Never! Because they have tied their life and their power there. And sometimes pastors, we preach and tell people, by the time you leave me, or you go, or you start your ministry, or you do this, your life will dry away because I'm from the fountain that flows to you. Look, let me tell you something. The Bible says, Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says, it's like the oil that comes from who? The head of Aaron, the priest who is Christ. And out of the overflow of what is in the head is where the body receives. And so, your unction should come from the Holy One. He said, ye have an unction, not from a pastor. They can be channels, but the unction comes from the Holy One. Let men and women walk in authentic power. I want to see koinonia people casting out devils. I want to see you heal the sick, doing the works of Jesus. I'm telling you, speaking breakthroughs over our lives, standing to legislate on behalf of heaven. Look at what this lady said. Her testimony blessed me so much. I look forward to times when our testimony on stage will not just be breakthroughs that came as a result of the prophetic declaration, but what God did with our hands. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Say, these hands are the hands of Jesus upon the earth, filled with the power of the Spirit. With it, I will do wonders. I will heal the sick. I will cast out devils. I will deliver nations. I'm anointed. The presence of God is with me. In the name of Jesus, you must walk conscious of his presence. He is with me. He is with me. This is what gives me confidence. Everywhere I go, he's with me. He's with me. I'm telling you, the word walks, W-A-L-K. W-A-L-K. The word, the Bible says, and God walking with them, confirming the words. There's no disappointment in ministry again. I found the key. It's the presence of God. I found the key. It's the key to the anointing. Is the key to breakthrough. God told me, if you have me, you have everything. I am telling you, out of his fullness, you can speak over the lives and the destinies of people and doors will open. That's why he's all I have. This is why we celebrate his presence. Every other thing is temporal. But I'm telling you, if you have his presence, you see why Moses said, do not let us depart. He said, I know your presence. Your presence brought us thus far. How many of you will pray and say, Lord, do not let your presence depart. The psalmist said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your spirit from me. There must be an evidence in your life. Freshness, unction, authentic power. That you shake every demon and devil disturbing your life. And you tell yourself, as surely as the Lord grants me grace, I can do it. Tonight I'm challenging you, brothers and sisters. The presence of God should be your greatest asset. The presence of God. Commune with the Holy Ghost in the place of prayer. In the place of worship. In the place of the word. In the place of obedience. You will find yourself walking in realms you are not prepared for. I'm telling you, stop chasing after the things that only his presence can give. Hallelujah. Who would have known that today by the grace of God, we will be doing the things that we are doing for God. Many people saw when we started. Nobody would have known. But by his grace by his grace evidence your coming tonight is the evidence that his presence is with us what will men do as the evidence that God is with you how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts 10 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed why for God was with him God is with me. Anywhere God sends me now, there's only one question I'll ask. Will you go with me? If God is going with me, that's all. That's all I need. 
Many of us do not know the value of God's presence. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. I want you to take it seriously and pray. You are going to say, Lord, your presence. I have left your presence. Many of us only run to God as emergency Christians. Emergency Christians. Lift your voice inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Your presence. My greatest asset. I take advantage of the person of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit. I take advantage of the favor of the Spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Shalakata proskada balakadi. Ambra basata breketele kosata. Rapata krasta la capre secate. Say, Lord, put in me a hunger, a hunger for your presence, a hunger that I will lie down in worship in your presence, soaking in the glory, soaking in the glory. So will you remain fresh. So will you remain powerful? This is a secret I've given you tonight. It's the secret of greatness. It's the secret of glory. The evidence of genuine intimacy. A life of character. A contrite and a broken heart. Conviction through faith. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Grace for prayer. Grace for worship. Grace for spending time in the presence of God. Say, Lord, open me up to visions. Open me up to dreams. Prophetic encounters. Make your presence real. Make the Holy Ghost real. Make the Holy Ghost real. Make the Holy Ghost real in my life. Pray and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. Freshness, unction, authentic power, character, maturity, love for God. These are parameters that let us know whether God is at work in your life. For many of us from today, you must make a resolve to let his word reign in you, find expression, take authority over Satan. Hallelujah. Now please keep standing. I'm glad to announce to you that we are ready to commence our school of ministry finally. Come on, you should celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. It's one of the great things God is doing. By the grace of God, Bishop Stan will be directing our school of ministry. It's going to be powerful four months intensive weekend programs hallelujah the forms are available they are free but limited we we'll take only limited people you know that god has called you into the ministry or to be an ambassador i'm not just talking of fivefold pastor you know that you have a hunger and you want to learn more to know more it's a powerful time we're going to graduate our students hallelujah we're going to have lecturers from different ministries and different people according to the order of grace that God has given them. It's going to be an awesome time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so please don't be emotional about it and just run and come and collect the form and stop someone who is supposed to. Pastors, whether you're already in ministry, we have people coming from different places. That's why we made it a weekend class. Hallelujah. 
and it's 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 powerful you've not seen anything like it i'm telling you we trust god that we're going to teach and help our students to become all that god has destined for them to be are you happy about that stretch your hands towards bishop as a point of contact we are praying for the school of ministry now lift your hands lord wisdom this is a new thing you are doing in the house and we celebrate you he's directing it pray for him unction from the holy one in the name of jesus say great responsibility to raise and train people say lord grace Thank you, Jesus. Lord, this will be a place where we raise kingdom ambassadors. Men and women of fire. Men and women who will shake their generation in every area. Ministry, business, politics, governance. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now pray for Pastor Jakes. We've also started our missions. How many of you were in Giwa on Sunday? Let me see your hands. Those who went. Hallelujah. It was a wonderful time. By God's grace, we hope to visit the prisons, secondary schools, police stations, anywhere that can be visited. Hallelujah. We are exposing everyone in Koinonia to practical ministry. Hallelujah. Whether you are, we will focus on our students, but everyone. So we can just come and say one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go and pray in the secondary school. And we say, Ella, you are the one who is taking the word. Grace, you are the one who will pray for the sick. You will do anything you know, dear. If it doesn't work, you come back on Friday. So let Friday will now become a time when we we'll gather together. And everybody will tell us what happened. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in what God is doing? It's a new season for us. And we give him all the praise for what he is doing. We thank him for what he's doing in the house. And we celebrate the hand of God. It's a sign of his presence. That great presence that has been with us right from the beginning. The angel of the Lord's presence. He's not left us and we thank him. He's left evidences in our midst. That authenticate that he is Lord. And Lord we give you all the glory. You're here, you're not born again. You've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. While standing. Tonight can be the night inside and outside. You heard me talking and the Holy Ghost was speaking to you. Or you've given your heart to the Lord and at one time you found yourself derailing from the things of God. With all the love that we have, now is the time to welcome you and to call you into a genuine fellowship and a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ and His Spirit. Right where you are, I want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. As the Holy Ghost speaks to you, at the back, everywhere, as the Holy Ghost is talking to you, inside and outside, we want to help you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ or you've backslided. Hallelujah. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit back there. There are people coming. I appreciate them. They are coming. Thank you for the courage. 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 As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit back there. You need to make a decision for Jesus inside and outside. For one more minute, we'll wait for you. And there are people like that. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, young, old. This is what this meeting is about. Hallelujah. Look at these little children coming out to make genuine decisions. You are not clapping when you were their age. What were you doing? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Now, look at me very quickly. I want to lead you to the Lord Jesus. This is the best decision that you would have ever made. Lift your right hand, all of you in front. Say after me very seriously. God bless you, brother. Lift your hands. Say after me, Jesus, I love you. And I believe you died for me. Today, I acknowledge that you are the Savior and the Lord of my life. Save me. Wash my sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm born again. I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus. Father, preserve these ones. Spirit of the living God, I commend you. Even to the young ones, I pray that you strengthen them by your power. Keep them, O oh God. Let their salvation be genuine. 
Let their experiences be authentic in the name that is above all names. The mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, thank you very much. In one minute, I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just, just look back. You'll see them. They'll have your details and you'll come back. Okay? Quickly, appreciate them. Celebrate what God is doing. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.